Hello, this is Scott. I am the CTO for Atomicorp, and in today's demonstration tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install ASL on a system that has uh, already been deployed uh, with uh, running applications. Uh, our example system for this tutorial is running uh, CentOS 6 and a LAMP stack with uh, a vulnerable uh, application to demonstrate uh, how ASL can solve uh, problems for you um, uh, both before and after. So our before is an example of SQL injection running on our example system. Um, and here's the content of the uh, injection and the response where we've be been, e been able to use this to um, enumerate uh, data out of the backend database. So switching over to a shell I already have uh, on the system, I'm going to run the ASL installer. And the first part of the dialog is the end user license agreement, uh, the end of which uh, uh, you select um, yes or no. Um, all of our dialog in ASL, uh, with the exception of some um, user credential information, we always assume that, that, that yes is, you know, or, or rather enter is going to be, uh, get you into the default state. So if you don't know the, the answer to a question in ASL, you can, um, I, I recommend just hit enter and accept the defaults. And uh, all of this information can be um, re-entered through the web console um, after the installation is complete. So again, if you don't know the answer, just go with the defaults. There's a much more robust um, front end to be able to describe what the feature does and the, the nature of the configuration change um, in ASL web. So the first of the only two places that you really need to be dynamic with the information here is the subscription section. The subscription username and the subscription password, these are the usernames and passwords you have created through our store. Um, I've saved this stuff in my cut and paste buffer so I don't have to type it because I have a really long um, password there. Uh, but again, this, this is the information out of the store. If you change the store, uh, if you change your username and the password in the store after you've installed ASL, you will need to update that information um, through ASL web in the console. It, it is tied to, to the account. so. Uh, that's the really the only gotcha there. Other than that, um, all the information that we're really going to go through here, it, we're just going to go with the defaults. And there's probably a, there'll there will be uh, later tutorials discussing some of these other features more in depth. Uh, but for the the sake of this installation, um, I'm just going to cover a very basic installation, uh, letting ASL pick the right information for us, and and really not get uh, into it at least at this level. So once the installation of the software is complete, we're going to go through configuration. Again, I'm just going to pick the defaults. So I'm going to say, hey, go ahead. Let's configure it. Um, our first field here is the up update type. Um, in our dialog, we describe what the options mean. I'm going to stick with all for this section. Um, there is the ability to configure ASL to only update specific components. Again, this is a simple tutorial. We're just going to go with the defaults. So we're going to say update everything. Um, check for updates frequently uh, at a daily uh, interval. We do update, uh, put out uh, updates on our rule feeds um, uh, uh, hourly at times, um, certainly more frequently than daily. Um, but in this case, again, we're just sticking with the defaults. So our next section is the firewall policy. The first part of the, part of the firewall policy is the um, ASL console access list. This is the uh, port 30,000 ASL web interface. We're just going to stick with the defaults. If you don't pick anything um, for the ASL console list, that means it's open to anybody can connect to it. Um, this information can be set after the fact. So if you don't know the answers here, don't worry about it. You can always configure it again later on through ASL web. Next section is the local TCP port firewall policy. ASL is going to look at the running system for the running services that you already have on the system. This one happens to be running SSH, um, a web server, and um, a database server. And it's going to pick a base firewall policy for me. Same thing with the um, outbound policy. Um, I'm not picking anything, so I'm just going to go with the defaults. 
we have a UDP firewall policy. It's detected that 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 port 68 is being used in the system, so it's been added to the um, UDP firewall policy. Uh, our next section is our blacklist configuration. We have a number of um, public blacklists that we've implemented in ASL. Uh, these can all be configured um, and turned on later on in, in through uh, the ASL web interface. I'm going to stick with not using them for now. Um, once that section is completed, we get into the installation type for ASL. Uh, what we want to do is run this one as a server, which means that all components uh, are installed on the same system, which is a very common configuration in cloud environments. Um, when you're dealing with uh, dynamic um, scaling, um, basically you, you, you always, you know, you, you kind of want these systems to be able to stand on their own, um, unless you have a more com uh, complicated uh, configuration behind the scenes. Um, this is the least amount of work. So every system is implemented the same way, and when it's cloned in a dynamic environment, the um, ASL, uh, you know, stack is is the same across the board. You don't and you don't have to do any extra steps. So once the console is complete, um, this is really the only other section where we do get into something an area where you you, you do need to pick some uh, dynamic information. Um, ASL needs to access the local running instance of uh, MariaDB or MySQL in order to install its uh, database tables. Um, so we're gonna. We'll come back on a later tutorial on what the advanced database configuration means, but if, if you were in a situation where you had a remote database server, this is where the information for that um, becomes involved. So in this system, it's just a you know generic box. There's uh, uh, nothing you really have to put in here. If, if you've um, set up your username and your password um, for MySQL, or you have a different user, uh, like on a Plesk system for, uh, for the um, administrative account, this is where you would need to put the dialog. Uh, other than other than the section above for the the user subscription, you know we're just going to stick with uh, the defaults. Those are the only other places that you need to have the information in advance. Next up in notifications, <coughs> this is the email address that ASL is going to send um, alerts to or email alerts to, and it's populated this based off of the host name of the system, which happens to be localhost, um, the default. Uh, if you had an external email address, you'd put it in here. You know whatever at domain.com. Uh, if you want to limit the number of emails to what we call digest mode, um, we would do that here. What this means is that if, uh, let's say, 10 alerts were generated in an hour, instead of sending you 10 different emails, it's going to roll all of those 10 into a single email, like a, a, a mailing list digest. Administrative users. Um, these are the administrative users are uh, user accounts that uh, you permit to SSH into the system and sudo to root. Um, uh, I highly recommend uh, populating this field um, with your administrative users. What it means is that um, later on in ASL, if you attempt to disable root logins or password-based authentication and you have not filled in administrative users here, it's a safety. It will keep you from locking yourself out of the system. So I'm not going to put any in here for now since we're sticking with defaults. But um, later on, if you do try to turn off root logins or password authentication, and you haven't done this, ASL will not will complain and it'll tell you, you know, it'll it'll help you from making you know a mistake that potentially could uh, lock you out of the system. Uh, our next field is active response. Active response is what generates um, firewall rule and account disable. Um, uh, uh, actions um, on the system based on attacks. So we're going to turn that on by default. There is a whitelist available for it. ASL is going to automatically populate that whitelist with um, some information that it's going to collect from the system, like your DNS servers, um, default gateway, and of course uh, localhost to keep those from ever being blocked. Um, additional um, IPs you might want to put into the whitelist would be monitoring systems or vulnerability and scanning platforms. We're just going to stick with the defaults here for now uh, because of this next section, which says it's going to detect the IP address that you have logged into um, the system from. So if this is a static or a known trusted um, source IP that you, you know, you, again, that you trust, you know, certainly go with the defaults here, and it is in my case. Um, if you have more, um, you can always add them in later on um, through ASL Web. 
our next section detects the virtualization type. Um, this system happens to be uh, not running virtualization, so uh, it's detected nothing. If you were running Virtuoso or Zen, this would automatically be populated and say, hey, I'm on a Zen system. And this is going to change some uh, later configuration options for you. Silently, automatically, you don't have to do anything. So just going to go with the default. Um, this is part of the security policy for uh, loading uh, kernel modules. I'm going to go with, again, the defaults. We're not going to allow it. And <coughs> the last dialog in here is for PHP checks. Uh, it doesn't mean if you turn this off, uh, set it to no, it's still going to scan and, and look at your PHP configuration for vulnerable settings and report them to you. It's just not going to make any changes on the system. So it's, it's basically stick with the default uh, here, and it's a safe mode. And you can always go back in later on in, uh, in ASL Web and select uh, what your PHP uh, uh, policy is going to be. Uh, and we have a number of sections in there for high-risk functions like system and eval. Um, again, this is a simple tutorial. I'll get into a much more in-depth tutorial on what that means um, on each section in depth. Um, uh, once the configuration here is complete, ASL is going to go in and update itself um, and pull down uh, its various um, rule and signature updates. Um, and we'll have uh, installed the kernel dialog. I'm going to go in with, with the defaults. While that's running, I'll sort of narrate a bit on this bit here. Uh, the malware and rootkit rules um, are associated with detecting uh, malicious code through uploads. Um, we have our threat intelligence database where we're able to uh, share information on threats detected through um, uh, other hosts, um, honeypots, uh, people in the ASL community back with you. Our web application firewall rule sets um, for defending the system against uh, our example uh, um, SQL injection attack is handled in there. We have our host-based intrusion prevention system, uh, which includes um, self-healing components for uh, uh, common faults in the system, uh, brute force detection, rootkits, um, and whatnot. We'll go into to, into more depth in a later tutorial on on each what each one of these things can can provide to you. Uh, if you saw our other tutorial uh, from last week. We covered part of that already with um, a, a, our iframe, uh, sorry, pardon, iframe uh, removal system in ASL. So once that's complete, uh, ASL is going to run its fix mode on the system and uh, uh, implement various changes uh, based on the policy you've picked. And the last part of the installation is if you want to scan the system for malware. I'm going to pick no because that can take a very, very long time. So once that's complete, it's going to tell you your console port for ASL. I'm going to switch over to my web browser here. We're going to go to the console. And our username here is the is your username. The initial username here is the uh, username and password you um, used when you signed up for ASL and when you installed them in the system. is a little smaller. It's not so difficult to read. This is the basic AS ASL console. Um, in our next tutorial, we're going to cover uh, sort of a, 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 a what ASL, what, what every part of this is uh, for you on the system. So just to close this out, I'm going to move back over to our uh, SQL injection example. We're going to go in here, rerun this guy again, and this time we get a 403. Right, so our URL went to the system. AS ASL has detected it and blocked it uh, on the platform. Right. Let me do that again just to sort of show you. So here we go. I've put my union select in here. Right, the exact dialog if you couldn't read that before. Hit submit and then bang. You can also see it up here. Since this is sent as an HTTP GET, um, y you can see the nature of the, the actual URL. If this was sent through a post, uh, you wouldn't get this up here in the top line. And if you switch back over here to our ASL console, you can see here are our attacks being detected. And then you can pull up the alert. And here you go. Here's the attacker. 
uh, my IP address the rule that it triggered. And if you want to get down into the nitty gritty of, of what the actual uh, client sent, you can see that right here in this section. We'll go over that in, 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 uh, in, in more depth uh, later on. Um, if this, if my IP had not been whitelisted, um, it would have also been blocked and I, I wouldn't be able to go and log into the console and show you this. So uh, I did whitelist it there, but uh, the, uh, the attacker IP, the default pr uh, um, policy that we chose in our installation was to block that guy. So there you have it. That is uh, uh, as brief as I could make an installation um, uh, with all this dialogue into it. Uh, we'll come back in our next tutorial and we're going to talk about uh, what all the components of ASL are. So thank you for watching the tutorial, and you guys have a great day.